First, open your preferred browser and search Prusa Slicer. The first result that should come up will be Prusa.com, which you should then click on. It should prompt you with the possibility to download Prusa Slicer on your operating system. In this case, we will be downloading the Windows version of Prusa Slicer. It will then download the .exe file, which you should then click on. You probably will need to allow Prusa access to your browser, PC, or laptop. Now, it should install Prusa Slicer. Navigate to your Downloads folder, or wherever else you would have it downloaded, and open the file. At this point in time, it may also ask you to modify, remove, or repair Prusa Slicer. This would occur if certain files didn't download correctly, or Prusa may have previously been installed. In this case, select Modify, and then select just about everything. Then Modify. After this, reopen the file and click Repair. Now, all the files should have been fixed. Next, find the Prusa Slicer download on your computer. It should be in your downloads or already in your desktop. However, if it is not, perform a computer search for it using the keyword Prusa. The file will be called Prusa Slicer and then the version number. Once it is opened, select the original Prusa Mini and Mini Plus, as this is the main printer used in DTAC. Select the 0.4 millimeter nozzle for the printer and click Next until it prompts you to finish. Now, Prusa Slicer should launch on your computer. Simply drag the STL file of the 3D model you would like to print. In this case, I have selected an Island Packers boat I designed not too long ago. For reference, the Prusa Slicer bed is 7 inches by 7 inches. When importing files into Prusa, they should stay the same size as wherever you design them, whether that be on shape or another CAD program. There are five tools that are present in Prusa Slicer. The first being the Move tool, which allows you to move the X, Y, and Z axes of your printer. The next is the Scale tool, which allows you to stretch and distort the file. If you simply want to scale all axes evenly, use the orange cubes present at each corner. The third tool is the rotate tool, which allows you to rotate any one of the axes. This is particularly useful for when a print is abnormally large and may run close to the edges of the print bed. The model can be rotated to set diagonally on the bed, which will prevent the print from bowing and cut down on the print time. The Place on Face tool will scan the STL file for any possible face to change how it is set upon the print bed. The last tool is the Cut tool, which can cut the STL file. If the STL file shows up blue on the print bed, that means there is an error and the print will exceed the boundaries of the printer. To fix this, either scale down the model or move it to the center of the print bed. Once your model is configured correctly, double check your print settings. It should either be at 0.20 millimeter quality or 0.15 millimeter quality for the best possible print. Select Prusament PLA for the filament and original Prusa Mini and Mini Plus for the printer. If these options do not show up, add a preset or add a printer if necessary. Also, make sure that you have the brim toggled on for any print. Infill should be anywhere from 5 to 15%, which will determine how much PLA is placed on the inside. Supports can be used to support an overhang section of the print. The option Supports on Build Plate Only will only build supports on the bed of the printer. The option for Supports Everywhere will provide supports for anywhere an overhang is present. And the option for Support Enforcers Only will create supports to enforce your build. For this print, I am going to select Supports on the Build Plate Only because the overhangs on the boat, designated in blue, are so minuscule that they do not need supports. The button Slice Now can be used to view what your print will look like after it is done printing, and all your supports. There is a meter on the right hand side which will allow you to see how the print will be printed, followed by a feature list in the top left which will show you where the PLA will be going. The feature list will also show you where the printer will spend most of its time, whether that be support PLA, internal infill, or any other parts. 
each of these parts will be designated in specific colors. Finally, you can view how long the print will take along with the cost of the PLA that is used, alongside with other metrics in the bottom right corner. Once you are satisfied, export the G-code to wherever you would like.